For the only time across the seven seasons, death spread across two continents in Sons of Anarchy Season 3. So let's get stuck straight into them. There's 22 of them. Europe, North America, none in Antarctica, none in Oceania, Asia. None in Asia. None in South America. Although if Elgin James was on it, there'd probably be deaths in every continent off screen like so. Yeah, but Elgin James ain't a part of this show. Thank God. Thank God. But 22nd place belongs to the one and only Grey Lexus, Laurie Allen, killed off screen. So maybe Elgin James <laughs> does. This have is his Elgin hands James' over this like show. one piece of input for the season. Basically, she gets her car hijacked and then gets killed. Really poor death. Don't, literally only killed her just so you'd think it was Maya Tara. But at least it served a purpose. And she did look very similar to Tara. Yeah. It's almost like they went to just see that. I wouldn't even be surprised if it was Maggie Sif laying there pretending to be this other person. What are you doing, brother? Yeah, could it, it could have been. It did look really like Tara. But you know what? At least it served a purpose. There's like, I'm sure those do deaths where like the character just dies and it's like, what, what was the Yeah, this, this was, the purpose of this was to make fucking Jack shit himself think, oh, there's my dead soon to be wife and talking of Jack shitting himself 21st place belongs to the adopted parents in Belfast Jackie boy could have saved her life but he didn't he stormed into the hotel they're both lying there dead because Jimmy O and Danny is Jimmy O a prick for killing them or did he just want no witnesses is Jimmy no a prick yeah he is a bit of a prick I would, I would agree Can with that could he not just like cuffed them up or something or, or look, do you just look, want look, to keep them quiet look at, silence, people, look, at, look at the amount of people he's killed Realistically, right, he's already, him and Donnie are on the run. So realistically, he didn't need to necessarily kill them because who are they going to tell the police? The police service, Northern Ireland. But they get killed off screen, so... Yo, Elgin James' hands are all over this. I know. Can we get some on-screen kills, please? 20th place belongs to Kellen Ashby. No. <laughs> Jimmy O liked, the fuck. Jimmy o liked an off-screen kill, didn't Yeah, he? but let, let, this, I think this is exhibit A why mine suck, right? This is our rankings for all the deaths in season three. And it's no coincidence that all the deaths that happened off-screen are taking up the lower spots in the ranking because off-screen deaths suck. You don't fucking get to see it. Everything off screen sucks. That's why the only thing that should happen off screen is minor things. And these are minor characters that got minor deaths. So I'm okay with it. But with Mayan's MC, it was like so much important shit that we needed to see actually happened off screen as well. And that's why we weren't okay with that. But look, Father Ashby, okay, he, he served his purpose. He was a half decent character, but we didn't need to see Jimmy kill Father yeah, Ashby. I actually like, they alluded to the fact that it was going to happen. Jack is like, you do know they're going to kill you. So, I mean, come on, we didn't yeah, need to actually I would see go, it. I would go as far as saying that it would have been pointless to actually show his death. Like, what's it accomplishing? Like, we already know Jimmy needs to die. We already knew he was going to do it. Realistically, I think off-screen deaths should be like this, where it does it, it's unnecessary. But fun fact, guys, we've got three more... No, aye, three more off-screen deaths to go. Holy crap, what's the, the next one? Lander. Grim bastards. Also off the screen. But you know what? This like this is I mean, this is a good off screen death because Tio's crying too much down the phone. Tig points out it's almost like a wee dig trying to bury him. A wee dig for Tig. Da, 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 da. I'm taking it. Right, they go into the house and the skull. It's buried in his skull. Knife through the back of the dome, throwing knife Call of Duty style. Jim's ass who did it. It's buried in his skull, man. Calaveras. So yeah, this guy's dead, but I actually like the visual dude. Yeah, Teal didn't take this too well, didn't you? No, no wonder. No, he didn't take it too well. Are you serious? And then Clay gives him the death star. I don't care how bad you hurt it. You don't blow this shit over, brother. But, uh, you know what? For me, cool visual. Does what it says on the tin. We move on. 18th place. Lumpy. This guy actually survives an attack by Salzar. You tell the sons nobody misses with the Mayans. Fucking big bitch slap with the AK. Lumpy goes back to the Holocaust with that fucking slap. Technically, he died off screen, but the injury that made him die was on screen, so... Okay. Okay. I shall. I'll, I'll, give, it, I'll <laughs> give it credit, you know what I mean? What did, you, what did you make of it? He hit him so bad he went back to the Holocaust. I thought it was a pretty good line and you just fucking glossed over it. No, it was. Aye, aye. It's a great wee line there. Great wee line. Nobody wants to go back there though. No, 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 Lumpy. Maybe, maybe Lumpy did. Who knows? But uh, yeah, you know what? This is like a decent enough character in terms of like who what it served. It's like a little mini story arc character. A guy that gets a couple of episodes. 
So he, he, he owned a gym, right? But sadly, he died. And in the last off-screen death, we have got Danny. Him and Jimmy carried quite a few off-screen death suits, so may as well have him be killed off-screen. Justice is served when Donny gets killed off-screen. And yeah, like I said, no surprise to see all our off-screen deaths happen at the bottom of our list. I'm not saying you can't have deaths that are good off screen, but it's they can't really compete with on screen deaths, can they? Yeah, like we don't need a two minute scene of the Russians like shooting at Donnie to kill him. We just need to see him dead. Yeah, like it serves no purpose really. Although if they gave us like thirty seconds, I wouldn't have complained. True, but True. yes, Donnie, so it wasn't really necessary. Sixteenth place on screen, baby. We've got Amelia. And we have uh, Gemma and Tara killing her accidentally. I mean, it's accidental. It's you know I wasn't really a big fan of this death. Kind of just happened to add a little bit of spice to the whole Gemma story arc where she's visiting her dad Nate, and I think they wanted to do this just to try and cause problems and show that they were being problematic for Tig. I mean, killing the the home help carer. I don't know, the Guatemala hottie. The Guatemala. Uh, they just, I don't know, I didn't feel like I needed this death. It wasn't really necessary. It was just an excuse to get that freak Stephen King in there. That's, that's, that's what it was, Stephen King. I know a guy, but he's weird. Bachman. Well, like, guess fuck. what, your books are shite. Let's move on. Let's move on, guys. 15th place belongs to what Stephen King is. He's a bozo. And uh, yeah, Cozy and Ted killed this guy, but it was a pretty funny scene. They killed bozo! They can push on the signs, man. The signs, amigo. Let me start on my landmark. Uh, but yeah, this guy got injected. Uh, oh, Billy, he knocked himself out in his sleep. Mm -hmm. fuck, fuck off. I'm, su I'm surprised that uh, he never died when Jack was pummeling him, to be honest, in the first episode. I know, like, how's he even got a jaw left? Like, Michelin's walkers. It didn't sit right with me, though, how the police just sat and watched that happen. That was bullshit. You know why, though? Because if the police tried to pull Jack's off, I'm sort of fucking dropped him. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, the patch outweighs the rank, the, the badge, the shield. 14th place, talking about that incident, we've got the child victim in the shooting. He died. And um, I tell you what, if this was a club member... Uh, it's going to kill you. I tell you what, if this was a club member, though, he would probably be right up beside Davy Hale. But it's some kid we do not give two yeah, shits about. Some unnamed kid. Could have died off screen for all I care. Don't get me wrong. That, I mean, this scene's a good scene, but he, he's just a victim. Just another victim. He's, some, he's a nobody that died in a decent scene, so therefore he gets a, a high enough rating. Yep. Uh, up next, we've got Cammy Hayes, 14th place. I feel like Cammy Hayes could have got a better death, but... you got to let Bill first know that Cammy Hayes came home. He did come home. Strangled by one of the Casey brothers. I believe it was... Michael. Michael. It was Michael. It was Mike Michael's putting this full grunting face. What was Sean doing? I don't know. He was probably up fucking Ashby's ass or something. I like Cameron Hayes. Do they need to go? Possibly. I think we made a video on that. Check out the channel. But Cameron Hayes, good character. No, it gets me though, right? Why did they need to strangle him and not shoot him? Is that the way the IRA day hangs? Shoot him would be a bit loud, wouldn't it? It would cause a Silence on it. We don't have silencers in Belfast. I fucking dead on. No, maybe I get a guy an open Pretty sure when Jack shoots him, he's using a fucking maybe silencer. Maybe they want to give him an open coffin. An open coffin? They, fucking, they, they put him in the short strand in the middle of... <laughs> the middle of the day. <laughs> this is open confidence you're going to get. Anyway, 12th place with one half of the Casey brothers, Sean Casey. Um, look up, boy. Sean. Come on, fella. Hey, Sean, Sean, boy. Sean, hey, boy. Let's fucking slap him in the Lift face. Lift your head, Sean, hey, boy. I got something to show ya. <laughs> no, why, right? I put this below Michael because Sean fucking gave in. He, he gave Jimmy the location. This must be the toughest bastard of Belfast. Yeah, the he's, butcher. He, he's tough when he, he was torturing people. It wasn't so tough when it's he was fucking, getting tortured. His scunts collapsed and turned a shade of brown when fucking Jimmy showed up. And then when Jimmy showed up, the, the walls turned a shade of red. I like the visual. We've got to clean that up. That's me. I like. Yeah, I know. I did like. That's the, what I'm paying you I for, like Danny. The, I, like, I like the visual of the blood splattering on God. Oh, Jesus, shit, brother. Now I can bury one of them, yeah? <laughs> right. May as well talk about the other Casey brother, Michael. Is he up next? Uh, he's up next. Michael Casey. Gets Casey Ryback's on this train. You know it's funny, he gets put down beside the bowl of fucking Frosties and his head ends up in the Frosties. It's actually a really good... I actually think it's a quite a good... He gets shot, his body springs back and fucking headbutts the table. And the I wasn't just... expecting him to get shot here. Nah, yeah. It was kind of out of the blue. Now he can bury one of them, yeah. And I like the fact Jimmy put his hand up and covered himself in the blood. Yeah, no, that was good. good Would day. you retrieve my lovely daughter's iPad, Donnie? 
Did we kill? iPod. 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 10th place. We've got Salazar. Uh, Jax likes to stab people and we stab them. He does. Salazar. Did he get done dirty? This possibly? Is, this is the moment uh, Charming PD died. That dream died. Yeah, this is the moment. They're under, officially patched in because he had no badge left. I mean, honor. it was an alright death, but... Jax goes against his word. That's what I don't like. I just don't like when people do this. I like when someone keeps their word. But see, real life, silly looking at like, well, what is? I mean, I made a fed. What if Jack spurred Salazar? Right, he probably would have rat it on Hale. But Clay, given the whole story to Alvarez about, oh, he's got a bigger card than you, get Hale. But then what? As Alvarez says, well, what? what stop, get, or stop them both. Yeah, why wouldn't he give up both? Why would he just stop at Hale? Yeah, it's not like, like if the police say, well, yeah, if you give us Hale, we'll, we'll drop your sentence to like ten years or something. And then he'd be like, oh, what if I give you Marcus Alvarez and the biggest fucking heroin shipment and trade? In California. We'll give you a turn million. <laughs> we'll give you a turn million. And I, and I took it to fucking Mickey, Mexico. No ceiling, you dumb bitch. But yeah, the death was all right. He got stabbed a few times and Jack's tanned his wrist with a fire axe. But stabbed a few times? Well, he stabbed them once. Well, he stabbed them, twisted about, fucking cut them up like a fish. Damn. Ninth place, Amy Tyler. Kill outside the building, stall shoots him in the front. Surprising. Yeah. Came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. You guys go around the front, we'll cover the back. Amy Tyler looked like, are we covering the back? And then I... Why are we covering the back? I'm telling you why we're covering the back. You're about to get taken out. Boom. And then we've got Stahl putting on the waterworks. Oh, officer down! Officer down! Send some help! Oh, the Mexicans are here! <laughs> Racism. Blame it, blame it on the fucking Mexicans. I don't, even know. I, I don't know if they were Mexican or, or Hispanic. Same thing, Stahl. Come on, brother. Latino heat. Well, it could be Mexican or from South America, like, would it matter? No. It didn't matter at all. They were Ca a weird casual. shade of white. Institutional racism here by uh, the FBI or ATF. Eighth place, talking of Mexican, we've got Edgar. Now, Edgar's a throwaway character. He's a sergeant in arms of the Calaveras, but this scene was great. I mean, now, hold if on. If you don't you, care, I do. <laughs> this scene was great because you had four different clubs in a fucking bathroom. That might sound a little bit gay, but it's it smaller actually, than my fucking room right yeah, now. Yeah, it was actually pretty good. Like, you know, you have Clay there, you have Alvarez there, handlebar, uh, handlebar tashes there. Uh, you've got Teo, you've got Teg, uh, Teg you've got Jax, the uh, Clay. Calavaras, you can mean pretty much everybody there. It was a who's who of clubs. Yeah, and I like the fact I mean, that I was sort of about 10 guns so pointing it's, it's a shame that, uh, it's a shame that Henry Lennon, fucking that other guy went there. What's his name? Leroy. All right, Leroy. Tell you what, what happened to Leroy in season three? He met, he was in, he was at episode one, given the location of the... Yeah, he made the fake ID, but that was about it. Did he live? Yeah, I know that, like, but did he, did he go to prison or something? Because you don't really get to see Leroy. I think he started making wee deals with Lobo Sonora. Coming in in seventh place, we are heading. Well, I'll say we're heading. We've already headed over the uh, Atlantic Ocean, but we've got Keith McGee pushed off a rooftop in Belfast. Why'd you do it, brother? Uh, just for the money. Just for the money, Clay. This, this, did, this, this little... Uh, this life didn't leave much for the, the like retirement much plan, brother. Right? You know, uh, oh, oh. Pushed off City Hall and Harold the Wolf in the background. Titanic, eh? What's that all about? Pushed off without a fault as well. You know what, right? It's a unique death. Not many people get pushed off rooftops in this show. I can think of like one other. But I think he did deserve the fault. I think he, I think he, I do think he got killed a wee bit premature. I think I think more than like five minutes between O'Neill and Keith dying could have not maybe did wonders is a wee bit extreme, but do you know how they could have maybe spaced their deaths out a bit? Like, they literally died within five minutes each other. I'd agree with that. I, I would change that up personally. Um, death number six, Scrum. Who's Scrum? Well, he's the secretary of Dunglo. Don't you start that! I did start. I'm sorry, Chubby. I started the engine, brother. I mean, this guy should know about fucking bombs and shit. No. Car bombs, lorry bombs. Big bombs. Yeah. Bombs, the bombs. Bombs that explode and go boom. The bomb in his fucking pants when this bomb did go off. He got blown to fucking smithereens. But you know what, right? We don't actually get to see Scrum's body, probably because... <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he technically do, is it? Not just like sitting in the, the fan. Hi. <laughs> Burning like a crisp, but... Yeah. Barbecue. A few people died in this. Obviously, we only know two of their names. This guy's in at sixth place, but we'll get to the other guy a wee bit later on. Fifth place with Davy Hale. Um, run over by the Calaveras hip fan. It's gonna cool. Yeah, uh, kind of sick. We see his head kind of get crushed there. I mean, Unser runs over. 
But I think Unser, Unser was going to check on David Hale, but he was more concerned to see if any of his fellow club members had got shot, so he, he ran over to see if Sam Crow were all right. What I would say is, you know, I feel like Hale could have moved out of the way. But I feel he like he, he, but he's Captain America. But he's a cop. He's trying to take this guy <laughs> down, you know. He's like... Yeah, it's I mean, not like he's going to whip out a fucking rocket launcher here, is it? No, but a smart thing would have been to, like, avoid it, move it the way, possibly get behind cover and start get shooting. Get behind your car or something. Yeah, I know, but Hale didn't do that, so unfortunate for it David. Happened, it happened fast for wee Uncle David, didn't it? Aye. He, he really had no choice in the matter. Fourth place, we've got Liam O'Neill. No one, just us! I mean, this, this scene here produced, like, quotes I quote every day. So, I mean, this... No one! Who else?! Didn't tell McGee about it, no, he wouldn't get on board. McGee no. He ordered you to blow up that shipment and kill army men? Come on, Sean, I don't want to tell you. Who else? No one. Just us. Ah, uh, brilliant. See Jack saying turn off the camera? Realistically, like, you're torturing the guy. Why does the camera need to be off for Jack's killing him? Like, who, who's that going to get in the possession of that's like, oh, here, fuck, they've killed Liam O'Neill. And if anything, wouldn't they want it on camera that they killed him? Yeah. But anyway, Sergeant Arms is dead. Sar- Sam Although, Bell. where the hell was Liam O'Neill's foot? Didn't need a foot. If McGee didn't get a foot, this fucker didn't deserve one, did he? Why is... All right. Why, 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 why is it, you know, Mr. Mayhem and not uh, stretching your, uh, stripping your patch? Well, I think he got both, didn't he? Really? Mm-hmm. It was Patch hoovered off him, then he was just his bare back. So he didn't even die a member, no? No. Well, he didn't get stripped of his patch technically. They never photoed it like, but I mean, he didn't, didn't exactly die with his patch on. I actually like the visual, though, of him hanging up in the meat hook. Can't really recall that happening in this show, to be honest. So would the record book still show him as a member, like, or...? Hey, we never got, he never got photoed out. Just got killed. So see, see, in 20 years' time, they're going to be like, oh, there was this great member of Sam Bell. His name was Liam O'Neill. He was a two-wire rhyme man. I get why Jax is killing him, right? But should, like, Seamus not kill him? It's his fucking own shot. True, but, I mean, it's Sam Crow and Sam Bell are just there to make up the numbers, really, aren't they? Uh, the numbers. I mean, I mean, Seamus had about two lines the entire fucking season. True. I, Talk- don't, I don't think Luther or Geezer actually got a word in since that fan crashed into the police either, so... No, I don't think we got the same. Although, why the fuck not, though? Let's know. be honest. You heard the Lady Luther? I mean... Did you I'm hear not, her? I'm, I'm not... I'm not gonna run them off the road. Ah! Uh, come on. I thought those two were good. No, they were good, but no, it was even better. Patrick. Patrick. Podium positions, guys. The third bet. Who would have thought this guy would come in at number three? I know. Right. You... Last time I seen you, you were in nappies, wee man. I'm still wearing them. I was 15 at the time. Anyway. Know, you better stick one on him there because he's just shot his pants. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> his, his fucking pants. Don't you start that. He did start it, though. No, but why is he other? Go, go, go. <laughs> He's fucking slapping the back of the fan like it's some horse. <laughs> fucking... Spank that fan, bitch. <laughs> no, but right. What you people maybe ask, why is he three places higher than Scrum? Because we get we get to have chips going over his body. This is like three. You diff- bastards all dead. <laughs> nah, shit, chips. He is fucking dead. Nah, I mean, come on, chips is the fucking man. Although he's an arsehole for choosing that power spin off over mines. He, he's on. He's uh, there's a fucking fit in that. He's talking about power. He's he's in the scene. Oh, you didn't think we wouldn't have come for retribution? And I'm like, fuck off, the retribution should have happened in mind, you prick. <laughs> what, you what about happy? I mean, you're, you're trying to get revenge for some jobber on power that they, they cares about. Power Book fo- Force 4, what the fuck's that? I'm going to feud, but no, how can you call a spin off Power Book Force 4? What the fuck's that? It's like some Harry Potter fucking manual or something. Chibi Boy in the, the Chamber of Fucking Spicks. <laughs> I don't know, right, but. Right, Patrick, what's on it? Can it death, I mean, can't do make me shite, but it was a good death, good death scene. And, um, I Chibs is the man. Right, right, what, right, talking to Chibs, he kills number two, Jimmy, oh, take care of our girls, Philip, yeah? I yeah. mean, Chib kind of half acknowledges it. But he, yeah, he like, gives him like, a nod to like, aye. Well, I'll take care of him, you bastard. I'll kill him, you know, fucking... Give yeah. them the wee Chelsea grin or the Glasgow smell, whatever you want to call it. What, what, what would have happened, right, if uh, Chibs was too busy doing power retaliation here and he wasn't available for this scene? I think Opie would have just got the double kill. Uh. Ope. 
Got to be strong for the Jer- club. Jerry in the back, and he's just spraying through the back fucking window. Fucking answer would have done it for. No. <laughs> answer, answer would have stepped up. Answer, bro. I got this, brother Chib. Don't you worry about it. No, but yeah, um, finally, Chib gets his revenge. It was. I mean, it was. Decades in the making. Yeah, he kicked him out of the IRA, kicked him out of Ireland. So. But we didn't do it when I got him in Sam Crow. True. True. No, it's mad about this, right? So you've got Jimmy O's death, which is great. Epic. Then you've got Stall's death, like 90 seconds after it. Two great deaths back to back. And that's what we're moving on to, guys. Number one is Agent Stall. Just like Chibs finally got revenge on Jimmy O, Opie finally got revenge on Stall. And as a certain officer Tate would say, this was justified, I think. Yeah, this was just the first fact. time Opie cornered Stall with a gun. I mean, you could argue, yeah, Stall might have inadvertently got Donna killed, but she didn't like straight up murder her. But Opie did warn her at that point, you know, stop doing shit that's going to put this club in danger before you get an innocent person killed. And she didn't do that. She still continued to lie. She still continued to do dodgy shit. She got half sack killed. She got half sack killed. Able kidnapped. And able kidnapped. And Literally then, killed half of Sam Bell while you're at it. And and then she goes and kills Agent Tyler. All right, Opie might not really care about Agent Tyler, but she went from doing shit that got people killed to actually killing people in cold blood with her own hands and her own gun. So by this point, I don't think you can really feel bad here for Agent Stall. No, you cannot. But feel- she did a good job. It's like, come on, Opie. You had you had mercy before. Well, no, I don't. I, I, I'm struggling. Put your hands on the wheel. I'm struggling to think of two deaths in a TV show. Like, no, that's good. And a back short to back. at the time. Now people will be like, "Well, what about Abraham and uh, Glenn?" But I'm pretty sure they don't happen like within ninety seconds. It's like, if you actually think of it, it's actually a, it's a full episode. Well, Abraham and Glenn were pissed. So let's be honest. Stall and Jimmy Hill were good. Yeah, Abra- Ab- well, no, what that joke he said about I uh, one's under a buck or something. I remember he said that and Carol was laughing for about two minutes straight. He's fucking the com- the comedian. Everyone at the Sam Crow fucking table's funnier than him. And that includes Piney who pisses himself. I never I never I never got the hype behind it, Abraham and Oh Abraham's a funny guy. Abraham's a man, Abraham knows what he's doing. I never personally thought... If he was that good, they wouldn't have had to kill Glenn off as well. It's as simple as that. They knew they had to... Or if he was that good, they wouldn't have just killed... They would have just killed fucking Glenn and kept Abraham alive. Right. Whatever way you spin it, Abraham But it was almost like they wanted to kill Glenn. They thought, you know what, we'll throw Abraham in as well for a two-for-one special. Two-for-one special. But that's what we got here at the end, guys. And that is it for Sons of Anarchy Season 3. Deaths. We're back very soon with episodes and So what you're saying is, Scrum and Patrick, those two deaths were even closer than these two, they're not... There are no great deaths. <laughs> I know, but the characters were a wee bit. O'Neill and fucking... <laughs> Patrick was a Telford, though. He was, and I put some respect on he that. He was man. a chibi Telford. Aye, he was. He was, guys, but that's it. Belfast, Saranara, brother. Testify. Make, make sure you like and subscribe and comment down below, guys. The views and the, the channel numbers are on the decline since mine's finished, so get those numbers up. I know. Or, or we'll have to hit the least... panic. We'll have to call in the fucking another charter here and... And do it off screen, so I we won't be on the screen, it'll be two of our fucking jobbers. Anyway. If you want to see Mayans MC season six review off screen, let us know in the comments down below. What we would have done for Mayans MC season six. We'll do ten episode reviews. Oh, there you go. I'll write a script and review it. You got it. <laughs>